The following is a lecture given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on August 22, 1973, in London, England. Om Agyana Timiranda Sagyananjana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nava Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda Sri Adyaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Haktaminda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Ram. Thank you very much. So, tonight's subject matter for speaking is what is Guru? So, Guru, there are many description, subject matter is the same, but different way Guru has been described by different acharyas. Their aim is the same, but language or presentation may be little different. So generally Guru means Agyana Tinirandhasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshur Mulitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nava. Just like in darkness, Agyana Tinirandhasya. Agyan means ignorance, without knowledge. That is called Agyan. So Agyan is compared Ignorance, stupidity, is compared with darkness. Just like if you are, if this room immediately all lights are off, then it becomes dark. We cannot see where I am sitting, where others are sitting. It becomes a confusion. Similarly, in this material world, we are all in the darkness. This material world is called darkness. Uh, it is called uh, tama. Tama means darkness. Or timir. Timir means darkness. And actually it is darkness. Because, because this material world is dark, there is need of sunlight, there is need of moonlight, there is need of electricity. But there is another word. We get description from the Vedic literature. Najatra bhasayate surja na sasanka na pavaka. There is another word, spiritual word, where there is no darkness and therefore there is no need of sunlight, there is no need of moonlight, there is no need of electricity. So Guru's business is to bring out the disciples from darkness to light. That is Guru's business. That is Guru. First business is that because he is su- everyone is suffering on account of ignorance. Uh, just like you contaminate some disease out of ignorance. You do not know hygienic principles. You do not know that this thing will contaminate me, this association will contaminate me, this kind of food will contaminate me, because we do not know. Therefore we contact infection, sometimes suffer from disease. It is very simple to understand. Everyone, suppose one uh, commits something criminal, 
due to ignorance. Uh, due to ignorance. But in the court, when a man is criminal, in the court if he says, the criminal, if he says that I did not know the law, he will not be excused. Ignorance is no excuse. Similarly, even a child, he does not know, he uh, catches one fire, the fire will burn. No excuse. The fire will not consider that here is a child, he does not know, excuse, no, no excuse. So as there are stringent laws of nature, or laws of the state. And because you do not know something, you have committed some wrong, you will be excused. No, that is no, there is no possible. You have committed something wrong out of ignorance, you must suffer. This is the law, nature's law. You can have many examples. Suppose you cannot eat more. Uh, out of ignorance, if you eat more, then you have to fast two days, three days, seven days. Or you'll have some disease. Uh, you cannot violate uh, any laws of the nature or any laws of the state anywhere. Wherever there is law, if you break it, then you'll suffer. This is ignorance. Therefore, Guru's business is every human being is suffering in this material world. Nobody can say that I am not suffering. It is not possible. There must be suffering. There are three kinds of suffering. That out of ignorance also, a rascal is suffering, he is saying that I am very happy. That is also another ignorance. There are three kinds of sufferings in this material world. Adhati, Adhibhoti, Adhidvai. Suffering on account of my own body and mind. This suffering is not uh, imposed by anyone else. I do it. The same thing. That I, I cannot digest, but I eat more. So there must be dysentery in my suffering. This is due to my body and mind. That is another one kind of suffering. Another suffering is imposed by other living entities. Just like your enemy or an animal or there are ants, mosquitoes, flies, they are all causing suffering. You are killing them and they are trying to give you suffering. This is called struggle. This is called adi bhauti, suffering given by other living entities. Suffering caused by myself. This is called adhātma, and suffering caused by other things. And there are other sufferings caused by the nature, superior power, adi dvaivi. Then all of a sudden there is no rain, no rainfall. And now for want of rainfall there is no food grain. Uh, excessive heat, excessive uh, chilly cold, uh, earthquake, famine, uh, so many, by nature, imposed by the nature, flood. So there are three kinds of sufferings in the material world, and uh, everyone is suffering either by one, two, or three or. But nobody can say that I am completely free from suffering. That is not possible. And why this suffering? Deep ignorance. I do not know. Uh, I am committing sinful life. I am committing mistakes. Therefore, I am suffering. Therefore, Guru's business is first to rescue his despised uh, disciple from ignorance. Ignorance. Uh, everyone is suffering out of ignorance. Therefore, Guru's business is to uh, just like we go to school. We go to school, we send our children to school. Why? To save him from suffering, to get education. 
If my son does not get education, he will suffer in the future. The same process. To get him out of ignorance, to get him uh, relief from the suffering. Uh, the Guru's business is Agnana Tinirandasya Gnanjana Salata. So suffering is due to ignorance. Ignorance is compared with darkness. So in the darkness, how we can save one? By some light. Uh, so Guru's business is to take the torch light of knowledge and present before the ignorant or the disciple in darkness, and that gives him, relief him from the sufferings of darkness or ignorance. This is good. Uh, then another verse says, uh, Tatvijyanathamsa guru meva avigacet sami pāni sotriyam brahmanistam. It is Vedic Indian. Uh, somebody was asking that whether guru is absolutely necessary. Yes, absolutely necessary. That is the Vedic Indian. The Veda says, Tatvijyanatham. Tatvijyan means uh, spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge, for acquiring spiritual knowledge, tadvijñānārtham. So, one, uh, gurum eva, eva means must, guru, mani, to a guru, must go to guru, not a guru, the guru. Guru is one. Because, as it is explained by our Devadinanda Maharaj, Guru is coming from the disciplic succession. What five thousand years ago Vasudev instructed or Krishna instructed, the same thing we are also instructing. Therefore, there is no difference between instruction. The word Guru is one. Although hundreds and thousands of acharyas have come and gone, but the message is one. That a guru cannot be two. Real guru will not talk differently. Uh, some guru will say that, in my opinion, you should like this, and some guru will say, in my opinion, you will do this. They are not gurus. They are all askers. Uh, guru has no own opinion. Guru has got only one opinion, the same opinion which was expressed by Krishna, or Vaisdev, or Narada, or Arjuna, or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or the Goswamis, you will find the same thing. Five thousand years ago, Lord Sri Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, and Vaisdev uh, wrote it, recorded it. Vaisdev uh, does not say that it is my opinion. That is right. Sri Bhagavan Uvasa. What am I writing? It is spoken by the Supreme Personality of God. He is not giving his own opinion. Sri Bhagavan Uvasa. That what he is doing. He is not misinterpreting the words of Krishna. He is giving as it is. Just like a bearer, peon. Somebody has written you a letter. The peon has got the letter. It does not mean he has to correct it or edit it or add it. No. He will present it. That is his view. Then he is guru. He is honest. Uh, similarly, guru cannot be two. Mind that. Uh, the person may be different, but the message is the same. Therefore, guru is one. The Vedic instruction is Tadvigyanatham sa guru meva avigatse. Guru eva, one must, eva means must, avigatse. Uh, this verb is used when there is this sense of must. Uh, and Deva says, go to a guru, guru. But he says, you must approach the guru. Guru is one. Guru cannot be two. 
Guru Meva Abhiyatse. And we see also practically in the disciple succession of Guru. Uh, the same thing is spoken by the Guru. Same thing. Repetition of the same subject matter. No other. Krishna says that Marmana Bhava Mad Bhakta Mad Jaji Mangana Muskuru. Just think of me, Marmana, just become devotee of me, Marmana Bhava Mad Bhakta, just worship me and just offer your obeisances unto me. Sarva Dhamma and Paritaja Mamekam Saranamaja, just surrender unto me. You'll find this instruction in the Bhagavad Gita. The same thing was spoken by all the acharyas. Ramanu Charja also says the same thing. Madhya Charja says the same thing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says the same thing. The Goswami says the same thing. And we are also speaking the same thing. There is no difference. Ah. We do not interpret the words of Krishna that in my opinion, Kuru Khetra means this body. This is Raskala. They, ah, the whole situation has been spoiled by the so-called rascal gurus who gives his own opinion. Oh. This is our plain declaration. Let any rascal guru come, we can convince him that he is not guru, because he is speaking differently. Oh. We can challenge any rascal. Oh. Just like Somebody came here. He says that he is God. Every one of us, God. Stop this. So I ask, they just find out in the dictionary what is the meaning of God. Let us see whether he is God. The dictionary, as soon as the dictionary was consulted, the meaning of God is the Supreme Being. Meaning of God. They ask him, Are you supreme? If you cannot understand, then find out the meaning of supreme. Then when he consult a dictionary with supreme, it is say the greatest authority. They ask him, Are you the greatest authority? The rascal could not answer. <laughs> he does not know even the dictionary meaning and he is claiming that he is God. This rascal run is going on. Whole world. Big, big rascal Sami, they say, why you are finding out God anywhere? You do not see so many rascal gods are loitering in the street. This is bad. If you simply consult dictionary, you can understand what is the meaning of God. God is so cheap thing, eh? supreme being. Are you supreme being? Supreme means the highest authority. Highest authority means nobody is equal to him, nobody is greater than him. That is supreme. So these rascals who are claiming to become God, is it a fact that nobody is equal to him, nobody is greater than him? There are so many. So this kind of guru, this kind of rascal will not help you. Uh, guru must come from the parampara system. By this act of succession, uh, five thousand years or five millions of years, what was spoken by the Supreme uh, God or Guru, the present Guru also will say the same thing. That is Guru. That is one of five Guru. Otherwise he is not Guru. Simple definition. Guru cannot change any word of the predecessor. Oh. There is one instance in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. One uh, gentleman is uh, Balavachal. He was very much devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wrote one comment on Srimad Bhagavata. Subodhini tika, it is called. Uh, that is recognized, nice tika, comment. But 
He approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was very great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he simply said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya, if you hear my comments on the Srimad Bhagavatam, you will find it is far better than Siddhar Sam. Siddhar Sam is a very old comment. Uh, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately rejected. Uh, you are claiming that you have written something better than Siddhar Sam. He chastised him. Sāmi means another. He sarcastically remarked the word Sāmi. Siddha Sāmi. Sāmi, another Sāmi means husband. So he said, Sāmi jiva nāhi mane vesya bale guni. I think one who does not recognize Sāmi, he is a prostitute. He immediately said. He did not recognize Siddhar Sāmi, then you are a prostitute. How can I hear from a prostitute? Refuse. Only word that I have written better than Shah. So this is the process of Guru. You cannot disobey the previous Acharya or Guru. No. You have to repeat the same thing. Not research. No. Sometimes rascals come that you are speaking the same thing. Why don't you speak something new by this actual? <laughs> we say that we have no intelligence. We cannot make any research. We are Guru Mare Murkha Deki Korido Bicha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that my Guru Maharaj saw me a great fool number one. So one who remains a great fool number one before his Guru, he is Guru. And one who says that I am advanced so much that I can speak better than my guru, then he is asking. <laughs> this is the path. Evam parampara prapam mimam raja sayo vidu sakale yuga nashta parantapa Krishna said in the fourth chapter. So, guru is one. Guru cannot be two. As soon as you find Two opinions of Guru, either both of them are rascals or one is just still at least rascals. There cannot be two. This is Guru. Another place, it is said, Tasmat Gurum Prabhadeta Jigyasu Sreya Uttamam Shabdi Parechanishnatam Brahmani Bhusamasvayam. Who needs a Guru? A third class, fourth class man, ordinary man doesn't require a guru. Guru to keep a guru or to have a guru is not a fashion. One who is very serious to understand spiritual life, he requires a guru. Otherwise there is no need of guru. That's why if you keep a dog as a fashion, then don't keep a guru. Guru means is a question of necessity. One must be very serious to understand what is spiritual life, what is God, what is my relation with God, how to act. When we are very much serious on this subject matter, then we require a guru. Don't go to a guru as a matter of passion. That is useless. That is useless. Therefore, Shastra says, Tasmad Gurum Prabhadri, because you have to go to Guru and surrender there. Without surrendering, you cannot learn anything. If you want to challenge Guru, it is not possible. Hmm. Then you will learn nothing. Uh, uh, Tasmad Gurum Prabhadri, uh, Pranipatena. So, just like Arjun accepted Krishna as Guru, he says, Sishtas Deham Sadimang Prapannam, I am now surrendered. That is the process. That is the Pranipata in Pariprasnena Srivaya. So, Kuro means Krishna's representative, former Acharya's representative. 
Krishna is all attached the representative of Krishna. Therefore, Guru should be offered the same respect as you offer to God. Tasmad Guru Prabhadev. Therefore, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, Jasya Prasadara Bhagavat Prasad. Because Guru is one of the representatives of Krishna, God. So, if you surrender to Guru, one of the Guru, that means you surrender to God. God is accepting your surrenderance through the Guru. Jasya Prasadara Bhagavat Prasad. If you surrender to Guru, that means Krishna is here. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvadharman Paritnadya Mamekam Sarnamaja, surrender. That somebody argues, where is Krishna? I shall surrender. No, you surrender to his representative, then he surrender to Krishna. This is the process. The Guru is the representative of God. Therefore, the Shastra says, the authority says, Sāśād haritena samastra sāstrai. Guru is as good as God. Here in this vast Buddha day, we are teaching, or they are doing, offering respect to Guru. That means they are learning how to offer respect to God. It is not personal affair. It is required because they are trying to be God conscious. They must learn how to offer respect to God or God's representative. That is required. Sakshadharitena samastha sastrai. In all the sastra Vedic literature, Guru is described as good as God. But Guru will never say that I am God. The disciple's duty is to offer respect to Guru as he offers respect to God. But Guru will never say that because my disciples are offering me respect as God, therefore I have become God. As soon as he thinks so, he becomes God. He is no, no more God. Therefore Vishnu Chakravati says, why Guru is offered respect like God? Kintu prabhurja priya evata Guru is offered the same respect as we offer respect to God, just like in the morning. Uh, the other side, Arutrik was going on, offering to Krishna God, and this side, was, Arutrik was going on to offer respect to the spiritual master. Uh, the same respect. Uh, but Guru will never say, and he is not. That. Guru will never say, now I have become God. No. God does not become. God is always God. So God is God and Guru is Guru. But ah, as a matter of etiquette, God is the Sebbo God, worshipable God. And Guru is the worshipper God. Let's try to understand. Worshipable God and worshipper God. This is Seva Bhagavan, Seva Bhagavan. Ah, that's a Guru is addressed Prabhupada. Prabhu means the law and Pad means the position. One who has taken the position of the law. The same thing, Sapsad Haritan. Ah, Prabhupada. Ah, now these are the terms one who is serious to study the science of God, they learn all these things. So one who is very serious to understand the science of God, for him a guru is required. Don't try to keep a guru as a matter of fashion. That it has become a fashion to accept somebody, some rascal as guru, and say that I have got my guru. Now what kind of guru you have got? You are talking nonsense. Ācāyatvāṁ puruṣa vedā, one who has accepted guru, he will talk sense, but there is meaning. He will never talk any nonsense. That is the sign that he has got guru. 
He has got the sacred thread. Yes, he is accepted by bona fide guru. There is the sign, sacred thread. Uh, so you are offering uh, good respect to your spiritual master. That is very nice. You are very thankful. But at the same time we should remember that how to carry out the orders of the Guru uh, so that people may not think that uh, you, you are talking nonsense. You should be very careful. So, in the Bhagavad Gita also, I am reciting, citing uh, various verses from various hastras, Katho Upanishad, Samadha Bhagavatam. Now, here is another verse. Krishna says, Tadviddhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya. This is Bhagavad Gita. Tadviddhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya. Upadekshanti tad jnanam jnanina tattva darishina. So you have to learn from Guru by three processes. What is that? First process is you must surrender. Tasmat Gurum Prabhadrita. Surrender. You have to find out such a exalted person where you can willingly surrender. Yes. <coughs> Therefore, it is enjoyed in this hastra before making a guru. Try to study him, whether you can surrender there. Don't accept any guru all of a sudden as fanatic. No, don't do that. That is injured. And guru also must study the disciple who wants to become a disciple, must study him, whether he is fit for becoming a disciple. This is the way of making relationship between Guru and disciple. Everything is there, provided we take them seriously, then we can be trained up how to become bona fide disciple, how to find out bona fide guru, how to establish our relationship with guru and act accordingly and make our life successful. Because guru's business is agyāna-timirāna-nasya, uh, jnana Guru's business is to enlighten the disciple because he is in darkness. Ah. In another place in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that Parabhavastavad Abodha Jata Javanna Jigyasata Atma Tattam Parabhava. Parabhava means defeat. Ah. Defeat. So, who's defeat? Parabhavastavas abodhajata, one is born rascal and fool. Everyone is born rascal and fool. Nobody, otherwise, if you are learned, if you are, if you know things, then why do you go to school and college and pass university? It is a fact. Ah. Animals. If we do not cultivate knowledge, then we are as good as animals. Now another animal is saying that there is no need of books, and he has become guru. But it is how we can get knowledge without authoritative studies of books and science and philosophy? But they are trying to avoid it. So imagine what kind of guru and what kind of disciple. So, Sastra says, Parabhavastavad avodha jata, avodha jata. Everyone is born as skillful. He has to be enlightened. He has to be given knowledge. And he has to receive knowledge to make his life perfect. Therefore, Parabhava means one who does not make his life perfect. He is being defeated. What is the defeat? Struggle for existence. We are trying to get better life. 
here also in this life also, we are struggling hard for getting better position. So real better position we do not know. Uh, that is described in the Bhagavad Gita. So Amritottaya Kalpate. Here in this material world there is no better position because there is death. He may possess a very good, better position, uh, but you will have to give it up. Either the better position we give, give, give up you, or ultimately you have to give up your better position. You cannot stay. Suppose you have earned millions of dollars, millions of pounds, now you have got good bank balance. You think, now I am in the better position. Uh, a little uh, dysentery, uh, call it dysentery, finish, better position. Uh, or the bank fails, that better position, gone. So there is no better position in this material world. It is a false. Therefore, those who are trying to get better position in this material world, they are simply becoming defeated. Because there is no better position. He is rascal. He is thinking this is better position. What is better position? Then Bhagavad Gita says the better position is Amritatta. So Amritatta Kalpate. Ah. Don't die. Keep your position. Ah. That is better position. So is there any science to give knowledge how one becomes immortal? Yes, there is. Uh, you can become immortal, not in this material science, not in this so-called university. But there is knowledge in the Vedic scripture by which you can become immortal. That is better position. Uh, no more death, no more birth, no more old age, no more disease. So Guru's task is very uh, great responsibility. He has to guide the disciple how to make him a uh, quite eligible candidate to get the uh, perfect position in mortality. Back to home, back to God. Thank you.
गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरी बनधारी यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन ಪರಮಂಗಸಪರಿಭ್ರಾಜಾಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ತಿಸ್ವಾಮಿಗೋಪಾಧಿ ಜಮುನಾಮಾಯ್ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಗೋ 